Hi, this is Adin. I'm going to be taking a look at the FANS project function X2 quadruple U. Uh, so this is FANS project's take on Weird Wolf. I know this is a little bit behind. Uh, I've had this for a while here, but um, I thought that with Smart Robin about to arrive at my post box, I should give this guy a look. Here's quadruple U's box with code. And you can see this series is really designed to look good together on the shelf. Uh, it's a nice display there. Let's take that off. Comes with a sleeve, just the same way Code did. On the inside of the box, if we can peel this open, you can see he's very nicely presented in there. I've already had this open. I think the tail weapon was behind originally, but uh, it's a nice little shoebox-like safe and secure place to keep him. Quadruple U out of the box. I've got to say, this is the first time that I've really played with him. I opened the figure up just to have a look and then put it right away and that was kind of colored by my dissatisfaction with the stunticons from fans project i don't like how they've turned out so i was put off this guy a bit but having this weird wolf in hand he looks pretty darn nice and i think i should have got him out a lot earlier and taken some photos because it seems quite fun like code, the posability is good, but limited in some ways. So we've got this ball joint in the shoulder, which is, is pretty nice. But you can see the detailing up here collides and limits the posability. Now, Fans Project have put an extra hinge in here. I'm going to try to extend it without popping the ball, which is a little bit... Oh, I've popped it. There we go. But it doesn't matter. You can see inside the ball joint itself is on a hinge. So that should give a bit more range but the reality is that it only gives marginally more range and you more often than not pop the shoulder off in the process which is going to loosen it so i tend to think that's it's a good idea but not really executed that great we've got a rotation above the bicep another swivel below the bicep and movement at the bicep itself now if you look here the bicep has less than 90 degrees so again limited but those limits really don't bother me that much. It feels pretty fun. It's becoming untransformed here. It feels pretty fun, so the, the limits kind of, uh, they're there, but you can easily overlook them. Now, the hand seems to open and close like this, so that's a little bit weird. It can end up looking pretty ugly if you don't pose it, but if you get it to sit there just right, it does, it does look kind of good as a hand. Uh, but because of that transformation there, we've got no... No extra movement in the wrist. There's a swivel at the waist, more ball joints on the hips, a swivel at the top of the thigh, more than 90 degrees at the knee. It looks like about 100 degrees. That's pretty good. We've got a tilt at the ankle, another tilt at the front section of the foot, and that's about it. What? We, oh, wait a minute. I'm skipping something here. The head. So the head has rotation and backwards and forwards which is pretty cool. Code had that backwards and forwards as well, so he can look down like that. All of that means that you can hit some decent poses. So he looks a little bit awkward there, but um, compared to some toys, it's pretty good. And the overall look of it, I can, I can give it a pass on that slight lack of posability. I mean, look at that. It's pretty nice looking. I'm, I'm not, not too unhappy with that. The only accessory that we get with the set is this sword, oh, falling over, and this also doubles as his tail. To hold the sword, all you got to do is peg it in like that, very secure, even though his hand splits like there, you can see that it's held in, it's a little bit more than a semicircle around that circle of the post, so it holds it in nice and secure, no worries there, but again, we've got no rotation at the wrist, but that second rotation at the under the elbow, it more than compensates for it. So you can move the sword into more useful poses like that, just based on this swivel here. Now I've found that the sword can also be stored on the back. So there's a little notch, and I don't know if this is in intentional, but if you sit the sword there, it forms a great place just to keep it stowed away. Now it's not rock solid, you can see if you go moving it around by bumping the legs into it or something like that, it will put pop it off, but if you're just going to put this guy on the shelf and you want him to hold his own weapon on the back, it is definitely a good place to stick it. For a comparison with code, here we go. 
they're almost exactly the same size and they do look very very um, good together like part of the same line one issue that I do take with it though is that we've got Decepticon and Autobot and they're both exactly the same size now I don't know if it's just me but I prefer my Decepticons to be a little bigger and it puts me off this version of Weird Wolf a bit that he's exactly the same size as Chrome Dome but that's not a huge complaint I mean if they're going to do tons of these guys maybe it's probably better that they do stick to a common height just so that they can all look fantastic on a shelf together and also so they can share the same heads so you can see here I've swapped heads and they fit perfectly and still look good on each other's bodies so that's another really good reason I guess fans project have kept them the same height I was kind of hoping that um, the weird wolf would be made by toy world instead of their what do they call him brainwave the version of um, brainstorm because as I said I would like my Decepticons to be bigger so if they made him they've got the more bulky style but instead they they did the same thing as fans project and now we've got two uh, fans project smart robin which is in the post coming to me right now i decided to only go with smart robin because that scale issue is the re one of the reasons and i think that the plane mode looks much better but we'll get to that when i have it in hand but this size is pretty good but i think it's worth noting that the the toy world heads and g1 style heads won't go on to this slot because they have the bar which is meant to push the energy readout on uh, g1 toys still intact um, so it's a no-go there but you can go the other way if that's what you want to do so there's quadruple use um, head on hard heads body and you can see that's a nice secure connection there and I don't know it's a little bit too small to actually turn the swiveling plate here but I mean you can get 90 degrees like that I guess if you if you really wanted to you could turn this first and then put it in at the angle but he's not a Decepticon, so his head doesn't really belong there, I guess. I guess Code might have, uh, Chrome Dome might have cause to swap heads. Now it's time to remove the head and have a look. So really what's going on here is, this is Weird Wolf, and here's his Transtector. I think I prefer that than the Western take on things. Um, seems cooler than having a little flesh bag living inside your head and then being headless as a robot to me. But anyway... You can see his face here has a really nice design although up until now on the video it probably doesn't come through that clearly with the the black face um, it feels quite delicate but it's not wobbly or anything like that something with head robots heads or even the uh, toy world heads they do feel a little bit wobbly but these fans project heads are nice and secure although don't seem to have as much movement in them you can lift up this panel here and see his nice painted eyes in there although there's there, it would have been nice to have some more detailing in here um, this panel is a bit of a worry you can see that it slides in and out like this and it's very thin there so you could easily snap it off any kind of transformation you should have it slid out until you are finalized and then push it back into where it wants to go so to transform all we're going to do is make sure that's out like I just said extend the legs rotate this pelvis area and then it's basically done poke that in just as much as it needs to go and there you have him the small form of weed wolf or quadruple u if you're going by fans projects naming now that's about as close as i can get it to the camera and be in focus but you can see his paint what he has of it on the face is pretty crisp nice little yellow detailing in the chest there and it's a nice little figure so that's pretty cool let's have a look in comparison to code here's weird wolf and chrome dome together very opposite these guys what about decepticon very different looks a different way of achieving the cover on the face you can see with chrome dome he bent over to hide the eyes but with um, weird wolf here it's more of just this panel folding up over the eyes and finally for the heads next to one of the toy world heads you can see it's got much more limited posability so these look fantastic and they are actually more fun I think in these tiny little robots 
but it comes at a cost of a little bit of floppiness. So you can see in some planes of motion it can be floppy, in others it's more solid. So that's kind of the price you pay to get the posability that Toy World have. And they both look really good. But if I had to pick one, I'd say I like the Toy World one a little bit better for this head, I think. Now we're going to go ahead and transform Weird Wolf. So this transformation is like nothing I've seen before, and it's worth the money for this figure just to experience this transformation, I think. So let's get ahead and do it. First thing I'm going to do is listen, untab these a little bit and rotate them 180. Oh, I did that the wrong way. That's just a ball joint that pops off. Rotate it inwards way 180 degrees like so i'm going to rotate the forearm pieces so they're pointing down like this flip out these little bits in here i'm not 100 percent sure what they do i think we're also supposed to pop these out although i'm not 100 percent sure what that does maybe it's some kind of holding hole to put the sword in uh, anyway Moving on from that, untab this front panel so it's up like that, and then pull down the back panel like this. That allows you to swing the head, just that bit up so it's out of the way. Now we're going to rotate this leg into this position. And I think the other one has to rotate as well into that position. Open these up like this. I'm going to take the weapon here and you can see this tiny little track that slots in right here. And the two halves of this are going to come together over the top of that weapon to kind of sandwich it in place and also peg into themselves so that it forms this solid chunk. Next, just move the body so that it's all aligned like this and get these down here. This section moves back. Now, this is the one weak point. I really would have liked there to be somewhere for this to tab in up here, but alas, it just sits there. So move this foot and put it in a more foot-like position. And you've got to do that on both sides. So again, it's a little bit like, it doesn't seem final, but that's just as good as it gets. Now what we want to do now is making sure these are still all untabbed, like not closed up, I should say. I'm going to swing everything down like this. It's kind of It's become caught again up here. That's what I want to do. In like that. And that's just about it. So all I've got to do now is move these front arms into a more leg-like position and rotate the claw out of the way. So that's like the front legs of the wolf. And pose however you can best do it, the back legs. He always ends up in this kind of hunched forward position where the front half is a little bit lower than the back half and that's just because I feel that all this doesn't collapse up as much as what it could. Uh, it's no big deal. A little bit off-putting to me but it does look really good. His mouth can open. It's got some little teeth in there. It's got a nicely red, glossy red painted eye. So the quality feels fantastic. The plastic quality, the tightness of the joints everything about it feels really great now again I'm not really sure why he's got these posts here and the instructions did say to put them out and I, I see that there's a, a thin little uh, handle in there that might be able to slot through here I'm thinking maybe in robot mode I missed that I could use that little post to hook into the shoulder I'll have a look at that at the end what we can do now is open up this section which forms a cockpit because don't forget this is the trans tector this is not weird wolf himself so we're going to get weird wolf and he's standing straight up and down like this just bend his legs into this position no fancy sitting poses or anything like that because it won't fit and with those two doors open it gives enough clearance to pop him in like so close that up if you want to see him 
you can keep the cockpit open if you want to close that you can close it all up and I can still see his head through the window there I don't know if that's showing up on camera but I love it it's just really really fun it's fantastic to play with there is no head swivel on this wolf unfortunately he does a great job of hitting a wolf pose but there's not a lot of other posing you can do because I mean he's got a balance on all fours I guess if you wanted to stick something in here to hold him up in the air you could do a kind of uh, leaping pose or something like that and he looks pretty fierce leaping out at you but um, as far as on the shelf goes really only one way to put him which is like this the paintwork is done really well if you look here you can see how crisply that white is painted around the rim so there's black and white onto that yellow plastic it's pretty impressive how neat they've got that to be other places like up here in the ear pristine plastic around that painted detail there's no overspray or anything quality is really high this black section here it's produced much much tighter than a lot of other third-party figures i have uh, produced and it makes me happy that fans project are still the one company you can count on to produce quality stuff uh, i mean i really don't like their stunticons but the things i don't like about the stunticons are not qc or it's 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 more the choices that they made and so they've, they've they've maintained that high level even though some of their stuff i don't like so my final thoughts and i'm going to end this video in beast mode which i don't normally do uh i love this figure and i think the price was about 70 dollars for 70 dollars this is really good i was looking at this guy and thinking i have trace from Toy World on pre-order for not much less than this and after playing with this I actually cancelled Trace just because I think that this is really good and I don't want to pay as much for figures that aren't as good as what Fans Project are making at this size and scale so this is definitely worth getting I think you don't want to miss this I think you can still buy it at a lot of places at the moment so it, don't pass up the opportunity Fans Project are good at this but they really suck at communicating and getting stock into shops in a timely fashion i think so when they do get something out as good as this you really should jump on it i mean nobody's giving me any incentive to say that i got tons of figures and this is really fun the cockpit makes it really fun the nice see-through cockpit the little guy that can go in it it's like a playset. uh i always liked headmasters i never had as many as i would like to have and it's that playset kind of value which it just puts it into a special category for me where i think it's it's just it's it's more than posing and looking cool it's fun to have i like putting this little guy in here it's awesome anyway that's been my video review for fans project quadruple u also known as headmaster weird wolf i'm odean thank you for watching